Hello, this is Dr. Neil Baum from New Orleans. And every year in August and September, I am reminded of the disaster that occurred 15 years ago when Hurricane Katrina visited New Orleans. And I would like to share a little bit about that experience and some of the lessons I have learned and hopefully lessons that you won't have to repeat. This video will take about six or seven minutes. So what are the facts regarding disasters? Few practices, including my own in 2005, have or had a written disaster plan. Business interruption and disruption is more frequent than most urologists realize. However, advanced preparation can alleviate some of the stress that is certainly going to incur following a disaster. It is far better to have a plan before the event than during the time of duress and stress that will certainly accompany a disaster. Let me share with you a few pictures of my Katrina story in 2005. This is beautiful Canal Street, pristine in uh, location and in enjoyment by so many of the tourists that come to visit our city. This is the French Quarter, again, a jewel of our city. Katrina came a calling on August 31st, 2005 and disrupted the entire city. And because our city is eight feet below sea level and there was a breach in the levee that protects the city, the entire city, over 90%, of New Orleans was flooded and nearly every medical office had to close. This is a picture of Canal Street with the flood having uh, consumed the entire city of New Orleans. So the question arises, do disasters only occur in the Gulf Coast or along the Eastern seaboard in America? Are those the only place that disasters occur? And the answer is no. Far more common are power outages, hardware problems, software problems. And you can see that fires and hurricanes are way on the right at the lower end in terms of frequency. There's three kinds of disasters. There's natural disasters, such as a hurricane. There's accidents, uh, such as uh, uh, explosions or um, nuclear uh, explosions or planes hitting uh, uh, various uh, cities and downing uh, communication lines. And there's also violence, uh, which has become all too common in our society. My take home message is that man-made disasters are much more common than natural disasters. And no practice, urolo urologists included, are immune to the risk of a disaster. Therefore, it's very important to have a disaster plan in place, an emergency mode operation plan that is prepared before the disaster and also a recovery plan after the disaster has occurred. I recommend having an implementation of your disaster plan, and that is a plan to notify patients and staff of the office being closed, how to reschedule patients, uh, the use of a phone tree by the staff that allow them to communicate with patients, letting them know about cancellation of clinic activities and when the practice will resume seeing patients, giving patients advice for what to do uh, for emergencies and how to allow patients to have access to 
their medical records as many patients will be leaving the community and will be seeing urologists elsewhere. I also recommend that you have a plan in place to move expensive medical equipment to a safe location where it won't be injured or destroyed. Another uh, recommendation of which I learned painfully the hard way is to transfer those expensive medications to a site with refrigeration. I did not do this during Katrina and lost thousands of dollars of medication that wasn't uh, replaced by the pharmaceutical industry and wasn't covered by my insurance or, dis, uh, or practice disruption insurance uh, policy. There is a basic disaster supply kit. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but these are some things that you should have packed and ready to go and checked on at least an annual basis. You also should have a recovery box that includes all of your uh, forms of insurance and license and also your malpractice insurance. And I also caution you to have in your recovery box plenty of toilet paper, which will become very handy should a disaster occur and you have to leave the community. These are copies, uh, this is a list of the copies of vital records that you will need to have in your recovery box. And this again should be checked at least on an annual basis. Hurricanes are often associated with humor and some interesting fun things will happen. This is a man who had his priorities in place about getting his significant other, and of course, to get his alcoholic beverages with him when he had to evacuate his premises. I also want to point out how important it is to have business interruption insurance. If a fire or a hurricane or a disaster makes your office unusable, as it was in my practice, because we did not have potable water and the elevators didn't work for several months after the hurricane, you may have to relocate to another uh, office or even close down your practice entirely. The take home message on business interruption insurance is that they will not uh, give you interruption insurance the day after the disaster occurs you will find that it often takes weeks or months for you to complete all of the paperwork and for your insurance company to compensate you after a disaster. In my particular situation, it was four or five months after the hurricane in 2006 when I got payment for my business interruption. Second take home message regarding business interruption insurance is it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. A suggested resource is a book that I wrote on disaster planning. This was my experience with Katrina where I wrote the book and including a CD which has all of the forms and all of the uh, suggestions that you should have and a checklist that is so important and I would be happy to share this with anyone that is interested in having these materials. So bottom line is your practice may not experience a disaster. However, you should be prepared if one should occur because it is not time to prepare and to take action after the disaster has taken place in your community and in your practice. I hope you found this information useful and helpful. If you have any questions regarding disaster planning or you would like a copy 
of some of the forms that I have mentioned. I would be happy to share them with you if you contact me at the email provided on the last slide. Thank you.